So we went over Kepler's third law in the simplified case of circular orbits, and that actually wasn't bad. It's pretty straightforward. Let's go over the authentic version of Kepler's third law, which is the law of periods for elliptical orbits, and says that if you have an elliptical orbit, the square of the period of revolution of any planet is proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis A of its orbit. So A replaces the radius that we had for the circular orbit, and we have T squared rev divided by A cubed is equal to 4 pi squared over gm. And we're going to try to establish this, we're actually going to successfully establish this, in the case of an elliptical orbit. However, bear with me because this is a long one, and it's a great derivation, and it's really, you know, if you've done it in a lecture, if it's been hinted at in any fashion, it's a great question on an exam, but it's not a straightforward one. So if you know the steps, it's pretty easy to, you know, piece it all back together, but if you're starting from scratch, it's, it's not obvious why you would use these steps in the first place. So let's go over the details. Let's assume that we have this elliptical orbit here, and let's just give it a direction. Let's say we're going counterclockwise like that. And what we're going to do is two things. We're going to first, we're going to remember two important formulas for ellipses because I know from experience that if I just kind of drop these into my derivation later, I usually get some empty stairs. Um, so as a reminder, the area of an ellipse is pi times a times b and b is related to a through the eccentricity. b is a times square root of 1 minus e squared. So let's just put that out there, and we'll recall it in a bit. But big picture here, what we're going to do is we're going to write conservation of angular momentum. We get to do that because Kepler's second law is valid. And conservation of mechanical energy. We get to do that because the gravitational force is a conservative force. That's the only force involved. So mechanical energy of the planet is conserved. Now, it's actually tricky to write conservation of angular momentum for the planet anywhere on its orbit. But it's really easy to write it if you want to relate the two special points of its orbit, which is the perihelion and the aphelion. So if you recall that this is the furthest point from the sun, and you call this VA, then you should be able to convince yourself that that's a 90 degree angle there. And then at point P, the perihelion, you have a speed VP. This is a right angle. And now it's going to be really easy to write that the angular momentum at A is equal to the angular momentum at P because we have the 90 degree angle. And then we can find a relationship between VA and VP, which is going to be useful. So let's start by writing conservation of angular momentum. Conservation of angular momentum, LA, is equal to LP. Recall that that's R. A cross PA in magnitude is equal to RP cross P sub P in magnitude. And the magnitude of a cross product between two vectors A and B, just as a reminder, if this is A, this is B, this is the angle of theta between them, and then the magnitude of A cross B is AB sine of theta. Okay, so if we have a look at what we have up here, then it's going to be pretty easy to write our A cross PA and our P cross P sub P in magnitude. Right? The distance from the sun to point A is RA, and it's actually related to eccentricity and the semi-major axis to this formula. The distance from the sun to point P is RP, and there's a similar formula relating RP to the semi-major axis and the eccentricity. 
So what we're going to write is the following. We're going to write that here we have R A M V A sine of 90 because the angle between R A and P A is 90 is equal to R P M V P sine of 90. Sine of 90 is 1, so that's convenient. And that's going to give us the following. It's going to give us R A, which is A, 1 plus E. Now this is 1 and this is 1, so that goes away, and then mass just cancels out. So A, 1 plus E V A, is equal to A, 1 minus E V P. Now at the end of the day, that gives us Vp is equal to 1 plus e divided by 1 minus e times Va. So that's what conservation of angular momentum boils down to. So we'll keep that in mind. We're going to use it in a bit. And then what we're going to do is write conservation of mechanical energy. We'll substitute this relationship into it, and eventually we'll simplify things. So let's write conservation of mechanical energy and again we'll do it between the two points A and P. So maybe maybe we'll do this, maybe we'll just grab this and bring it down here and just have a smaller version of it on hand for reference. Okay, so conservation of mechanical energy is going to be written Ka, well actually let's just write it this way, let's just write it mechanical energy at point A, Em at point A is equal to Em at point P. Now we know already that Mechanical energy is kinetic plus potential. So we're going to evaluate kinetic and potential at both points, and then we're going to do a bunch of gymnastics, including substituting Vp is equal to 1 plus E over 1 minus EVA. All right, so what is the kinetic energy at point A? Well, that's easy. That's 1 half little m Va squared. And then I have to use the right gravitational potential energy, which is minus G big M, which is the mass of the sun, little m, divided by the distance between the sun and point A, well, that's Ra, is equal to 1 half, same thing at point P, mvp squared, minus the proper term for gravitational potential energy, g, big M, little m, over Rp. Okay, and so... Turns out little m cancels out everywhere because it's a common factor. And we're left with Va squared divided by 2 minus G big M divided by Ra is A times 1 plus E is equal to Vp squared over 2 minus G big M over A, 1 minus E. Right. And recall from above that Vp is equal to 1 plus E over 1 minus E times Va. So we're going to substitute this into here and continue, and then things are going to simplify. We're going to get, we're going to get an expression for Va squared. Now, it doesn't seem obvious why we would want that off the bat, but bear with me. It'll make a lot of sense after when you see what we're using Va for. So, the goal here is to get an expression for VA. So this is going to be VA squared. Actually, let me do two things at once. Let me multiply by two everything, because I don't like to have fractions if I can spare it. So this is going to be VA squared minus 2G big M over A times 1 plus E is equal to, now VP squared is 1 plus E over 1 minus e squared times Va also squared 
minus, there's a 2. Careful, we multiplied both sides by 2 everywhere. GM divided by A times 1 minus E. All right. So let's group terms, right? Let's retrieve on the left-hand side everything that has VA squared and throw on the right-hand side everything else. So we're going to get VA squared minus 1 plus E over 1 minus E squared times VA squared is equal to 2GM two over A times 1 plus E minus 2GM over A times 1 minus E. Now it looks already like we're going to have some factoring here that's going to help us out. So let's factor out VA squared here. And we're going to have VA squared times 1 minus, let me write it like this for clarity, 1 plus E squared over 1 minus E squared. Obviously, it's the same thing, but we're going to simplify all this and do common denominator stuff, so it's just easier to see the denominator here. And then we're going to factor out 2GM over A times... 1 over 1 plus e minus 1 over 1 minus e. So there's that. And then common denominator to the rescue. So let's write this as va squared multiplied by common denominator is, of course, 1 minus e squared. So it'll be 1 minus e squared minus 1 plus e squared is equal to 2gm over a multiplied by, now the common denominator here is 1 plus e, 1 minus e, and so the numerator is 1 minus e minus 1 plus e, careful with parentheses and minus signs. And so that can be simplified a little further as well. This is VA squared times, well, 1 minus E squared downstairs. I can't really do much about that, but I can expand the numerator. So A minus B squared and A plus B squared is what I have. Um, so I'm going to have 1 plus E squared minus 2E and then minus 1 minus E squared minus 2e. All right, just as a quick reminder, a minus b squared is a squared plus b squared minus 2ab. Of course, if then if you replace minus b with b, you get almost the same thing, a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. Convenient to, to know these. They show up a lot. And that's going to clean up a bit. So 1 minus 1 goes away. E squared minus E squared goes away. And then out here, what I'm left with is 2GM divided by A. Denominator is 1 plus E, 1 minus E. And then 1 minus 1 that goes away. And minus E minus E is negative 2E. All right. And so... We actually, let me simplify, this square here is going to knock out this thing. We end up with the following. We end up with VA squared times minus 4E over 1 minus E is equal to, um, well, minus 4E GM, let's just write it like that, divided by a times 1 plus e. And so that's going to get rid of the minus 4 e's. And we're going to get a simpler expression for va squared. And I actually ran out of paper. So bear with me here.
All right. So we have VA squared. I'm actually going to leave it as VA squared. I don't want to square root it. We'll see why. Is GM 1 minus E divided by A times 1 plus E. Now, I did it in this order. I mean, you can pick any order you want, really, but I did it in this order so that I could first write conservation of angular momentum, sub that into conservation of mechanical energy, and eventually get VA squared. And I don't need to go back to conservation of angular momentum now because it's already folded into this expression. So I can then continue and say, well, look, what are we trying to do? We are trying to establish Kepler's third law, the expression for it. And what do we know from Kepler's second law? From Kepler's second law, we derived this earlier, we know that dA dt is constant. It's equal to L divided by 2m. Right? So it follows that if dA dt is the surface area swept per unit time, and I want to find the entire area of the ellipse, then all I have to do is take dA dt, which is area per unit time, multiply by the total time it takes to go around the ellipse, which is the period of revolution. And that's actually the sneaky way that you fit period of revolution back into this. So this rate times t revolution is actually equal to the area of the ellipse, which, remember, we said is pi ab. So since dA dt is L over 2m, then we have L over 2m t rev is equal to the area of the ellipse, which we know well to be pi ab. All right, so what do we do with this? Well, eventually we want t rev squared. So I'm going to square it, and I'm going to isolate t rev on the left-hand side. So t rev squared, I would have to square both sides prior to that, is going to give me 4m squared pi squared a squared b squared divided by l squared. And recall, we said this earlier, but just, to, just as a reminder, b is a square root of 1 minus e squared. We have v a squared up here, and that's going to come into play because angular momentum L sub A is going to be equal to M A 1 plus E V A. And we derived that earlier when we wrote conservation of angular momentum. So I'm going to sub those into this expression. It's going to square B, and it's going to square L A, and then that'll introduce V A squared. So bear with me. We're almost there. What does this look like? It looks like t rev squared is equal to 4m squared pi squared a squared multiplied by b squared. Well, b squared is a squared multiplied by 1 minus e squared divided by l squared is m squared a squared 1 plus e squared times v a squared. We know what VA is, so let me bring this along down here so that we can have it next to us. We'll just make that blue for consistency. And so here we're going to have T rev squared is equal to. Now, first, let's clean some stuff up here. M squared goes away with this M squared. And then A squared cancels with this A squared. So now we have 4a squared 1. Now, 1 minus e squared is actually 1 minus e times 1 plus e. And now we're dividing this by 1 plus e squared. So that's going to get rid of that. And in the denominator, I have va squared. So what I'm going to do is, rather than divide by va squared, I'm going to multiply by the flipped fraction here. So I'm going to multiply by a 1 plus e over gm 
1 minus e. And that's going to clean stuff up further. 1 minus e goes away with this. The remaining 1 plus e cancels with that. And what do I end up with? I end up with Kepler's third law. T rev squared is equal to 4. I forgot a pi squared up there. Apologies. This, this pi squared here survives. and So I get 4 pi squared a cubed divided by gm. And so the square of the period of revolution is proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis through a constant, of course, of proportionality because this thing is all constant. So here we have it. We have T rev squared over A cubed is equal to 4 pi squared over GM. Arguably much harder to get to this result than in the case of a circular orbit. All right. So if you do know the steps, it's a little easier. And, you know, it's, it's doable. It's not a very easy question. And this really depends on who's teaching the class. I've seen, I've seen this on exams because the professor or the instructor just likes derivations and maybe did part of it in class or it was on a homework set and now it's on the exam or hey, just likes derivations, figured somebody would figure it out on the test, and so put it on the test. So if your class tends to be derivation heavy, this is one that I would keep in mind because there's enough steps that if you don't know what you're doing and how to thread this needle, it's going to be hard. But, um, you know, if you practice a bit, it's not, it's not the worst derivation. It's, I would think it's a hard test question. It's not a very nice test question because it doesn't really prove your understanding of physics all that much. But I have seen it, so I figured it was worth talking about. Thanks for watching this video. If you haven't heard of Cogverse Academy before, we're a tutoring company that specializes in creating course companions that help you save time and improve your grades. You tell us which class you're taking, and we'll have a look at your syllabus, old exams, the style of your instructor, and put together a course companion, mapping over lecture notes, videos, practice problems with step-by-step -step solutions, even personalized study guides and access to a private chat for you to ask all your questions. If this sounds like something that might be helpful to you, feel free to check us out at congressacademy.com.